Hello and welcome. We are glad to be with you all again. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Yes, Father God, we welcome you, Lord Jesus. Yes, you are awesome in this place. You are mighty. You are all powerful. And here we are to minister, Lord, in your presence unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let your kingdom come. Let your glory be revealed, Lord. Among the nations, unto the nations, Lord. We ask of your nations, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, come and bless your people. Reveal your heart to us, Lord, today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's open our Bibles to Psalms chapter 42, verses 5 and 6. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill Mizar. So this is the psalm of David and psalmist is addressing his soul. The soul, our soul comprises of mind, will and emotions. Psalmist is strengthening himself in the Lord. He is telling his soul, why are you so downcast? Hope in the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is not allowing his soul to overtake him and lead him. He is not submitting to his soul. He is submitting to the will of God, to the mind of God, to the heart of God. Same way, we have to take control of our soul. Do not allow the soul to rule and reign over you. You take control, you dominate, you have the power to reign and rule over all because God is giving you. So let's encourage ourselves like how David always strengthened himself in the Lord. Even at, in his low times, in his bad times, he never gave up. He never gave up his hope on the Lord. His eyes were fixed on the glory and the lifter of his head. As it says that those who look to Jesus, their faces are radiant, they are never ever put to shame. So let's fix our eyes on Jesus and gaze into the fire in his eyes. For every captive will be free through the fire in his eyes. As we gaze onto him, as we fix our gaze onto him, his fire will start beaming and gleaming in you. You will catch hold the fire of the living God and your captivity will be broken and your faces will shine with his countenance, with his gleaming glory because he is the lifter of your head. And in Psalm 34, chapter 22, Psalms 34, verse 22, it says, The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Let's hope in the Lord, let's trust in the Lord, for he will never fail us. I invite the worshippers, come, let's worship this mighty God who is awesome in this place, who is worthy of all our praises.
bow down before you and we serve you majesty king of majesty yes lord in royal robes we don't deserve but we live to serve your majesty we welcome you lord be thou exalted be thou lifted on high
we will never stop blessing you yes lord because you are worthy you are holy you are powerful you are mighty and we were made to worship you to lift you on high lord and you deserve all the glory you deserve all our praises kept for us. Jesus, give us eyes to see it. Give us ears to hear your voice, Lord. Open up our senses, Lord, to please you in all things, Lord, to listen to your voice and to follow our good shepherd leading us. We yield to you, we submit to you, we submit to your plans for our lives. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, Lord, as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it's an awesome time of worship this evening. I'm going to share a word and um, I've titled it, The Lord Surrounds His People. The reason why I did this was because we're going through some difficult times, difficult times in this world where there seems to be things going wrong. And every day when we look at the news, we are bombarded with all kinds of news, news about conflicts, natural disasters, diseases, new strains of, of, of drug resistant viruses coming all over the place. Now I'm told uh, there's a new virus, new strain called the Delta strain, and which has hit our city just a week back and, and they had unlocked some, uh, a lot of the places around, but suddenly this Delta appeared and now we are back to square one. And some of these strains, uh, viruses have no cure yet found. And when we hear people around us dying, people are losing their loved ones. And the situation is so bad when you meet people where they have no strength at all to, to stand up and face things, they don't know where to go, the doors are shut, and things are so bad. But we ask ourselves, is there a place where we can go to at a time such as this? Can we go somewhere? But our God, He foresaw all these things, let me tell you that. And He has promised us in His word complete protection from the evil and from that evil which is known to man. He has given us protection. You and me as believers have access to that faith that faith into the secret place of the Most High, that is our portion. We have got the right to go into that secret place of the Most High, where no devil can enter it. That is a place which is closed doors for all, any devil. He cannot enter that place. But you and me need to go into that place. And we need to enter into that place with prayer and worship. There is no need for us to be living in fear because the Lord is our refuge. He is our fortress. And we've got to trust about everything else. We've got to trust in His Word. So this evening, I just want to tell you that we are living in uncertain times. Because every day I'm getting information of, of somebody else passing away, somebody else being admitted to the hospital. I get calls in desperation for a, 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 a bed in the hospital. Because no hospital is, bring, uh, uh, you know, is full. All of them are full. And there are people who worry about their future. Some people who have passed away have a have lot of issues, they have not left a will. So, so you know all these connected problems. Life is not easy. And a lot of the people are so afraid. They, have, they keep worrying about their families, what is going to happen to them, what is going to happen to all the, their belongings, their land, their homes. So much of worry is around. And we need to deal with that. They're afraid that what might happen to this world if Delta uh, strain comes in, will there be another strain? And you have all the people talking all, all uh, different connotations and different you know, theories. They will tell you all of that. And it all frightens people those people 
who have no place to go into that secret place of the Most High God. So this evening, I'm going to tell you about the beautiful psalm which the Lord has given to us. If you are in a position where you are unsettled, where you are insecure, go to Psalm 125. And that's a great place to go to with your prayer. And I'm going to talk about this psalm this evening. We'll break it down and see how beautifully God is promising us so many things in that psalm. Because this is a psalm of triumph. It's a song of triumph. It's also one of the songs of the first time Zion being mentioned. It's one of the songs of Zion. The city of Jerusalem first appeared in these Psalms. I'm talking of Psalms 120 to 134. These are called the songs of ascent in the Bible. I'll come to that later, but in Psalm 122, it's the first time Jerusalem appears. The city of Jerusalem. And that is a place of triumph. Zion first appears in Psalm 125. And in that 15 Psalms from 120 to 134, there are certain segments of songs which are divided into triumph songs, into, into songs of praise, the songs of security, and all of that. So we'll just break it down this evening and understand what God was trying to tell us through that psalm. The Psalm 125. So those of you who have the Bibles with you, please open it. It doesn't matter whatever version you have. Read it, uh, go to Psalm 125. Because most, evening, most of this evening, we're going to be spending time on that psalm. Because there are some major themes which is going to come out of that that psalm. Let me read the psalm for you. Psalm 125, it's also called a song of essence, like I told you. Because in the old days, the people, all the community, walked up all the way to Jerusalem three times in a year. And Jerusalem is located in a hilly area. The terrain is hilly. There are all mountains surrounding the place. And these people coming in from different locations have to go through these mountains and climb and, and face all kinds of issues. And they come as groups. When they come as groups, they will be singing songs, songs of praise, songs of protection. Depending what the situation is, what they are facing, they would sing to the Lord. And that's why it's called Songs of Ascent. 125, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, for the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Lord, do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will punish with the evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. The theme, the entire theme of today's Psalm 125 is a theme of security, of safety. And this psalm is a stepping stone, like I told you that all these psalms, 120 to 134, are very, very important because it talks about humans bringing up their issues to God. So I would say it is a, 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 a stepping stone to the very heart of God. Because like the mountains, like I said, it is it, you, when you ascend, you go up. So there are different steps you have to take. And so it is a stepping stone to God's heart. It is what the psalm is all about. 
because it's built upon each other. Each of them is a stepping stone. 120, 121, 125, and goes up right up to 134. And there's also another reason why we call the Psalms a song of ascent. Psalm 125 take, talks about the, the hills of, of 121. This entire 121 talks about the hills. And the holy city of, of Jerusalem comes in 125, 122. But together they are combined in 125. And God shows us a new dimension totally about God's people being secure, how they are secure as uh, uh, like Mount Zion, how they are surrounded by the mountains, and so on. 125, Psalm 125, there are three basic issues which we must understand, which we need to keep in our minds. Number one, because I can tell you it, there's a lot of profound truth behind this one, Psalm 125. The first one, those who trust in the Lord are safe and secure. They're both safe and they're secure. Those who trust in the Lord have a secure inheritance. Their inheritance is secure. Number three, those who trust in the Lord have a secure future. That's the theme of this psalm. This psalm is trying to tell us all these things. That the Lord, those who, the, the, those who trust in the Lord are, are safe and secure. Those who trust in the Lord have a secure inheritance. And those who trust in the Lord have a secure future. It doesn't matter about coronavirus is going around. It doesn't matter about new strains, delta strain, all this coming. Now all that is not the issue which we should break our head about. Because we have a future, a secure future. That's what the word of God says in our Bible. So let's break it down and, and go into this a little more deeper. One, those who trust in the Lord are safe and secure. Now let's look at the first two verses. The first two verses are says, it says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. This psalm, these verses, these two verses tell us two things. They tell us what you are like when you trust in the Lord. And also they tell us what the Lord is like to you, to you and me, when you trust him. And it's very important for us to understand that. That he loves you. He wants you. He wants to know everything. And he will take care of everything which happens around you. Because you are like Mount Zion which cannot be sh shaken. But endures forever. That's what he says. First of all. What are you like? Do you trust the Lord? Do you trust the Lord completely? Because it says in this Bible, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. That's what the word of God says over here. So the question I'm asking is, do we have that kind of faith? Or are we living busy lives in this world, being caught in all kinds of directions, and we having no time for God, no time to enter into that secret place and spend time with him? Are you like the Mount Zion which cannot be shaken but endures forever? Whatever the issues which come your way? Let me tell you, the Bible uses Mount Zion very symbolically 
for Jerusalem. And that's a place where God dwells with his people. Jerusalem is a place. And Jerusalem, the place where God dwells, is clearly a place of safety and security. When you understand that he's in a place, obviously when God is in a place, the place is secure and the place is safe. I don't have to tell you that. John 10, 28 says, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. That's what the word of God says in John 10, 28. And further in 16, 8, Psalm 16, 8, uh, 8 says, I have set the Lord before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. That's an assurance we have. When you set the Lord before you, when he is at your right hand, you don't run after other things of this world. You will not be shaken. You will remain firm. Because when the Lord is on your side, you are safe and secure. And you become like Mount Zion. And that Mount Zion can never be shaken and it endures forever. 1 Peter 2.6 says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. The one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. I'll repeat that again because it's so important. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. The one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. You can understand that underneath the, in your Bibles. And you will be never put to shame, whatever the, the situation which may come in our lives. Because verse 6 says, Christ is that cornerstone. He is that cornerstone. And when you put your trust in him, you will never be put to shame, let me tell you that. So many people drift their way through life doing so many things chasing so many things and they don't they don't have a foundation a foundation in Christ that the life depends on him and nothing else because when you build your life on Christ and his words you have that solid foundation and you are like Mount Zion you become like Mount Zion which cannot be shaken but it will always end your doesn't matter what comes your way what issue comes your way you will endure it you know that your God is there that Jesus is there he will fight your battles he will protect you he will save you but the question is do we have that kind of faith Jesus said this about his, his followers I give eternal life I give them eternal life that's what he said and they shall never perish and he goes on to say no one can snatch them out of my hand what an assurance he says nobody can snatch him snatch us out of his hands the question I'm asking is, is your faith is in Christ this evening? Are you safe and secure? Because you need to be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. Let me tell you, the Lord surrounds you on every side. That is what it looks and or rather that is what you will experience when you trust in the Lord. So what is the Lord like to you when you trust in him? Ask that question to you yourself. Look at verse 2 of 125. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. 
Mount Zion is high, it's a, it's a hill. And it's immovable. But Jerusalem is at a place, is among the hills, but there are bigger mountains surrounding that place. And in the center is Jerusalem. And that's why verse 2 compares the surrounding mountains to God's protection in your life. Just the way the mountains protect Jerusalem, the city of God, those mountains protect Jerusalem. Likewise, the Lord protects us because we are his people. The Lord is not simply by your side. He surrounds you on every side. Whichever way you go, he will surround you. Question I'm asking is, can you get safer than that? Can you have an assurance more safer than that? That your God is with you, he surrounds you wherever you go. Let me tell you, there is an amazing story in the Bible about Elisha, prophet Elisha and his servant. And this is in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15 to 17. They woke up one morning and found that the enemy king had surrounded the city where they, both Elisha and his servant were. And they were about to capture them. Elisha told the servant, don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. This is what he told the servant. Don't worry. Nothing is going to happen. This, of course, confuses that servant no end because he was totally confused. Because he counted on our side means what? Elisha and myself. There are only two. What is this Elisha talking, prophet talking about? Whereas on the other side there's a whole army with horses and chariots and, and, and all of that surrounding the city. I'm not able to figure out what this prophet is saying. And when we read this in, in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17, Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so he also may see. He just prays to God saying that open his eyes so that he can see what is going to happen. And so the Lord opened the eyes of the servant and he looked up and you know what he saw? He saw the hills full of people, full of horses, full of chariots and fire all around Elisha. That's in verse 16 of, of chapter 6 in 2 Kings. God's army was all around Elisha. And that phrase, all around, is that same phrase which is used here in Psalm 125, verse 2. Where the Lord surrounds his people. The same Surrounding was done in, during Elisha, Elisha when he prayed to God. The same word appears again in, in Psalm 34 7. In Psalm 34 7, it says beautifully, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. That's what he says around them. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. Now we have seen this, this phrase, both now and forevermore. It is repeated in the earlier Psalms of Ascent in 121 verse 8. It's not the first time it's being used. Oh, there it says, the Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Tells you both now and forevermore. 
when he said it, when he is talking at the, to us and saying that both for now and evermore, both are equally important. And it's such a great thing that we don't have to make a choice today. We don't have to decide which one we want. Whether we should take both now or we should do forevermore. Because you are absolutely safe, let me tell you that. And secure because the Lord surrounds you. And he will surround you forever. Not only now he surrounds you, but he will surround you forever for the rest of your days of your life. If you look at Psalm 1, 125 verse 1, and you look at verse 2, both in verse 1 and verse 2, it ends with the word forever. Both those verses. Because not only you are so strong and lasting and unshakable as the Mount Zion, the Lord surrounds you like Jerusalem. So God's people are like the mountains surrounded by those mountains which are both immovable and impregnable. Nobody can come and, and take you away from God's hand. To get at Jerusalem the army had to pass through mountains. To get to God's people, an enemy must first get past God. He has to get past God before he can touch these people. So that's my point this evening. 125, where Telly says, you don't stop worrying, you stop worrying about all these things. Because they have to get past God before they can touch you. You are safe in my hands. Because if you trust the Lord, you are safe and secure. That's what the word of God says in Bible. So to get at you, they must first deal with God. The second point of the psalm, those who trust in the Lord have a secure inheritance. That's what he's, the psalm says. We have a secure inheritance. Do we worry about our retirement? By the time we are 58, or around that age, you start worrying. You start thinking. You start thinking, how, how much of money do I, have I saved this lifetime working? How am I going to invest and take care of my family after retirement? Who are the people who watch over me and, and take care of me? Because after retirement I have, there won't be a job, there won't be an income, there won't be so many million things you are worried about. So this psalm is telling you that if you trust in the Lord, you have a secure inheritance. Why do we do that? Because, simple. People worry about earthly inheritance all the time. But you don't do anything when it comes to your heavenly inheritance. You don't think about that. Very, very few people think about the, the heavenly inheritance. Because let me tell you, those who trust in the Lord have a secure inheritance. They don't have to worry. They will never worry. Because the God will take care of all those things. And verse 3, it's beautiful. It says, a scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous. For then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Verse 3 is speaking about the inheritance of people. It talks about the rule of the wicked and what they would do. And it also talks about 
the potential sin of a righteous man if a righteous man mingles with the wicked he might do something which is wrong god is warning us about that very clearly let me repeat this uh, verse the scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous for then in other words the righteous and the wicked people cannot be mixing up together because then the righteous might use their hands to do evil it says over a period of time you the righteous people might start doing evil and it teaches us that the inheritance of the righteous is kept safe and secure it is kept secure from the wicked please read that verse again the scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous and let me tell you the allotting of land it is an inheritance language of the bible whenever the bible talks about inheritance it talks about inheritance of the land because god promises people the land of canaan as their inheritance what about us god promised canaan but we have an inheritance awaiting us in heaven i'm sure of that because but the bible very clearly tells me that my my inheritance is safe and secure in verse 3 of psalm 125 david let me tell you in psalm 16 verse 5 says lord you have assigned me my portion and my cup you have made my lot secure david is crying out to god this is not what it you have already made my la- inheritance secure look at that verse three this understand there is something very important about the wicked which you need to understand the present rule of the wicked will not last wherever they, whether they are in the office whether they are in the community where you live in wherever they are their rule will not last forever we sometimes worry about the wicked and a world that is does not care about god we know what are the things they do and so we are worrying what it but verse 3 teaches us very clearly that the wicked will not have their way with god's people forever they cannot interfere with the inheritance that god has promised his people that's why the scepter of the wicked will not remain of the over the land allotted to the righteous evil is temporary let us understand that but good believers who are good who serve the community who trust in the lord will last forever that's why the saints of god abide forever but the troubles do not whatever trouble comes our way god provides for an answer god provides a way out you have an heart operation god will take care of your expenses god will take care of the doctor who has to operate you god will take care of the hospital where you have to go he will do all of that it is not your fear of retirement which is the issue similarly the wicked power of the wicked that will be broken it's all short lived because they cannot no longer rule over what has god has preserved and reserved for his people they cannot touch it and that's why i'm telling you your inheritance is both secure and kept safe from the wicked and god not only does that he keeps you secure 
and safe. He keeps you safe so that you may receive it. 1 Peter, let's go to 1 Peter. 1, 4 and 5. As we have a priceless inheritance. Please understand the word, so precious. We have a priceless inheritance. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you. Pure and undefiled beyond the reach of change and decay. Beyond the reach of change. It cannot change. And it cannot decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation which is ready to be revealed in the last day for all to see. What beautiful words in the Bible. When we go deep into that word, such revelations keep hitting you, saying, my God, he's kept everything for me. My inheritance, inheritance is secure. Why should I worry? Why should I think of all, all these issues connected with the time and so on? Because my inheritance is kept secure. Nobody can take it. And it is kept safe so that I can receive it. Our inheritance also is kept safe because the wicked people are ruling and God does not want us to get into a, a situation of potential sin in our lives that we may sin at some point in time if we go around with these wicked people and that is a great comfort to us because let me tell you then all of us are not above sin. None of us are. It may set you thinking, am I going to lose my, my salvation? Am I going to lose my inheritance in heaven? Let me tell you, the answer is no. Not only is your inheritance kept safe from the wicked, but you are kept safe to receive it. In fact, one of the reasons why God cuts short the rule of the wicked, he cuts them down. They don't last forever. One of the reasons why he cuts them down totally is because you will have no longer live in a world that you know, attempts to, to, to suck you into it. And to send he doesn't, God doesn't want you to do that. Because the devil works overtime wanting to capture his, his people. And if you trust in the Lord, you are the first target for them. 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1 says, an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, is kept in heaven for you. Who through your faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed for the last time. I love this Psalm 1 Peter because you know the reason that it expresses the same, the same truth that we find in Psalm 125. That not only your inheritance is safe, kept safe for you, but you're also kept safe from, for, for your inheritance. Let me tell you, church, through faith, you are shielded by God's power until that coming of salvation that will be revealed in the last time, last days. It will be revealed to everybody, to you and me. Jesus spoke something similar lines when he spoke about the last days. In Matthew 24, 22 it says, if, if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. 
for the sake of the elect, that is you and me, those days will be shortened. Question is, what does Psalm 125 verse 3 teach us? It teaches us the power of the wicked will be broken for sure. While it is broken on the outside, the power of sin will be broken in the inside. That's what will happen. Your inheritance is kept safe and there, nobody can take it away. It is there. You don't have to worry about that. It is secure. Coming to the third point. Those who trust in the Lord will have a secure future. That is one of the biggest worries when you have when you you are in a state of retiring, retiring from your work, from your company, from wherever. At that age, you start thinking, "What am I going to do? I have no job from tomorrow." Let's have a look at this Psalm uh, 125, verse 4 and 5. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evil doors. Peace be upon Israel. This final section of the Psalm is about the security of God's people, how secure they are. And the three things that we learned about the future. What does it, it talk? The Psalm 125. It says God will do good to those who are good. To those who are righteous. Those who believe in his son Jesus Christ. He will banish those who are evil. He will answer the people who pray for the peace. Peace of Jerusalem in particular. God will do good to those who are good. That's what it says in verse 4. The prayer is like a petition. God do good to those who are good. Why is that like a petition? Because none of us are good. None of us really receive, are fit to receive God's goodness and his mercy and his, and his grace. But when we ask for it, we receive it through Christ and nobody else. Nobody else can give it to you other than Christ alone. And God promises us and teaches us how to pray. And God tells us if you are good, God will take care of you. Now who are the people who are good? Let me ask you that. Are we talking of those perfect people who don't make any mistakes? Who we think have never sinned? Absolutely not. If, because if it was so, none of them would be included in this plan of God. The good here is in verse 4. And it's not the morally correct or the people who have not sinned. It is only one category. Those who put their trust in the Lord. Nothing else matters to God. You love his son, all these things come into play. If you don't believe in his son, Jesus Christ, these things cannot happen. So these verses are basically about, it's not about works. 
that we have to do certain things to get something, to go to heaven and get our salvation. No, it's about faith, faith in Jesus. Let me tell you, goodness is not defined by, by perfection in whatever you do. But those who are upright in heart, who love the Lord and are upright in heart. It means straight. Those who are straight with the Lord. A straight heart with God. Because once you accept Jesus, you know what happens? We don't talk about unrighteousness anymore. Because why? Because we need a good heart, a new heart. A new heart comes into your heart. Your heart gets, original heart gets replaced. When you, start, when you accept Jesus, you get transformed. A new heart comes into your body through faith in Jesus. And this is very important. When you have that new heart, you are made new completely. And when you are made new, you will naturally always do good. You will do good works also. Jesus in Matthew 12 verse 33 says, Make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. 12.33 Matthew. When you put your faith in Christ, let me tell you, God gives you a new heart. God makes you a new tree. A tree which is good. And a good tree will bear fruit. And let me tell you, you are made good in God's eyes. And therefore you will always do good only. Romans 2, let's go there. Romans 2, I'm reading from 6 to 8. Verse 6 uh, to 8, yeah. God will give each person according to what he has done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor and immortality, he will never give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and, and anger. God will banish those who do evil. There is no place where he will accept it. Because God only wants to do good to his people. His chosen people. 125 verse 5 says, But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evil doers. The word crooked, it really means devious. It means crooked, means really devious. This is completely in contrast to an upright heart which appears in verse 4. Those who turn in crooked words, the Lord will banish with the evildoers. Now there is a clear separation. You'll be now understanding that. that there is a clear separation between good and evil. Between good and wicked ways. And that's very important because on the judgment day all this come into play. Because there will be a banishing of those who do evil. Please remember that. You cannot just come go to a church on every Sunday and, and pretend to be good. Give that holy walk on that Sunday on the church and rest of the six days lead an evil life. No. You cannot, and you cannot fool God, let me tell you that. 
Matthew 7 verse 21 to 23 says that not everyone who says to me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven please listen to this I am repeating not everyone who says to me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven many will come to me and say that day Lord, Lord did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles then I will tell them plainly I never know you away from me you evil doers <coughs> the Lord Jesus will tell you away from me I'm not I don't know who you are get away you've got no right in heaven go how beautifully it has been put in the Bible so there is no point acting lead a righteous life the book of revelations talks about this new Jerusalem the city of God where God will dwell with his people forever revelation 21 verse 27 says nothing impure will ever enter it or will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life wow that's what is written please check your Bible 21 Revelation 21 27 the Bible talks about both blessing and banishment blessing for those who are made good and therefore do good and punishment to those who are evil and therefore are evil in nature it's a very clear distinction there God will answer the day you start praying God answers his people when you pray for peace God answers God will do good to those who are good those who are not good of course obviously he will banish them let's go to Isaiah chapter 2 verse verse 2 and 3 In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple, that's Zion of course, will be established as a chief among the mountains, and it will be raised above the hills, and all the nations will stream to it. Many people will come and say, come, let us go to the mountain, to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of, of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his path. That's what Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 and 3 says now let me tell you the prophecy of Isaiah actually ties up with one, the Psalm 125 that all the things stated in Isaiah's prophecy comes to pass in Psalm 125 you want to know what they are? I will tell you Psalm 125 talks about the prominence of Zion Mount Zion it talks about the preservation of God's people it talks about the change which God will make into the hearts of people who trust in the name of Jesus the blessing in the last days God promises how that those who trust in the Lord have a secure future and when God also pro promises that answer his people's prayers when they pray for peace Acts 17.25 says God is not served by human hands 
as though he needed anything. Since he himself gives to all his people breath and all things. Life itself is a gift from God. <coughs> Psalm, Psalm 50 verse 12 to 15. It says, if I were hungry, I would not tell you. For all the world is mine and all it contains. Shall I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of male goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pray and pay your vows to the Most High. Call me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you and you will honor me. I just want to cover a few verses so that you know how it's tied up with, with Psalm 125. Again in Psalm 64, 4 says, For the days of the old they may not have heard or perceived by ear, nor the eye has seen a God beside you who works for the one who waits for him. If you wait upon God, he will be there for you. The whole thing, let me tell you, let me tell you in conclusion, that it is about all about your faith in Jesus. If your faith is in Jesus, you are secure, you are safe, you are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken. You will endure things forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, or the Lord surrounds you on every side, Every side the Lord Jesus will surround you. <coughs> if your faith is in Jesus Christ, your inheritance, let me tell you, is secure. It cannot go anywhere. The power of the wicked can the power of the wicked will completely be broken. It will be completely broken on the outside. You will not see it anywhere. The power of the sin which works in human beings will also be broken inside, meaning your heart. If you believe in Jesus, there is no sin which can reside in your heart. You're completely cleaned up. You're totally new. If your faith is in Jesus, then your faith is secure. Or rather, your future also is secure. Because you have been made good in Christ. And God will do good to all those people who believe in His Son. So don't worry, don't be afraid. Is your faith in, in, in Christ? I'm asking. If it is so, you don't worry, please. Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about the pandemic. Don't worry about Delta uh, strain coming up, etc. A hundred things. Don't worry about all these issues. Because you are secure. But if your faith is not in Christ, then we have a problem. Then you neither have, are secure nor safe in fact, you will be on the opposite side. That you will not be like Mount Zion. You will face consequences. You will face issues. You will be faced in trouble. You will be worried. You are not surrounded by God's protection by any way. You are completely excluded from the blessings of God. Or the blessings which the righteous have. Or the believers have. And you are also in danger of being banished completely. Away. So you need, what I'm trying to tell you is, you need to have your trust in Christ. Jesus Christ is God's Son who died on the cross to pay that full payment for your sins and my sins. It's done, it's finished. He's paid it on the cross of Calvary. 
We don't have to do anything. When we put our faith in Him, He gives you a new heart. So that we can obey Him, we can follow Him, obey His commands. He'll give us full protection. He pledges. Jesus Christ loves us so much that He pledges His protection for us. He promises a secure inheritance. He gives us a beautiful mansion in heaven. He's kept it there as our inheritance. A place of peace and in his presence always. The question is, I'm asking in this current times when things are so bad, won't you trust him today? Won't you look at Jesus as the author, as a savior of your life? Blessed. Let me tell you, blessed. I want to repeat that again. Blessed, blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. I just want to end telling you that. That those people whose Lord, whose God is the Lord, are truly blessed people. God will take care of things. We need to go into that secret place of the Most High. And the way to go to that place, that sanctuary, the permit card which you need to go inside is only accepting Jesus. There's no other way you can do that. There's no other way you can go into that. You, go, you have Jesus with you, the doors get open, you will be royally taken in into that sanctuary. God bless you guys. Think about this in difficult times. Like I said, Psalm 125 is a place to go when, when you have difficult times. Not only during this pandemic time, but any issue of your life. Loss of a job, loss of anything, Lord, issues of a community, whatever. Whatever difficult times you're going through, Psalm 125 is a place to go and meditate. It will give you comfort, it will give you joy, it will show you the way. Thank you. God bless you guys. We'll have a song and then I will give the benediction. Oh, sorry.
I'll give the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. I ask all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for this day and forevermore. And all the saints of God said, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you guys. Uh, see you next week. And we'll have a time of, of worship and sharing of the word. Uh, same time Saturday, 7 p.m. Uh, please do tell all your friends and, and neighbor and, and all of the community where you live in so that they can enjoy uh, the time of uh, Saturday evening in prayer and, and worship and understand this great God whom we serve. In Jesus' name, amen.